we're going to take a look at managing an options portfolio in a scared market. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this one live and see how things go. And um, we got a couple of positions that we're going to take a look at. Keep in mind, none of the things I talk about here are recommendations to buy, sell, or trade anything. Just my own personal thoughts and opinions. All right, so let's kick things off here as we take a look at... Um, the portfolio obviously this is a uh, simulated trading portfolio and account so we're going to go and take a look at this and um, check it all out all right so first things first hey good morning kevin um, i'm going to go ahead and just check some things out for what's going on what's happening in the marketplace Obviously, I already know because uh, I have went ahead and took a look at some live positions. But as far as this portfolio goes, I haven't really evaluated too much, but I do have to keep up with it periodically just to have some positions going uh, for the coaching and mentoring students that I typically uh, work with. So anyways, um, obviously, MU is moving. You got CCL and I've posted those things on the other channel that I have for technical analysis if you want to check that out. So definitely um, take a look at that. That's on the critical charts uh, channel. So anyways, as we go in and take a look at the portfolio, I'm dealing specifically here with options. So I have to look at each individual trades. So here for spec trades, number one, I'm just kind of going down the line. The long portfolio I look at usually a little later because it's less critical. The ones that are a little bit higher up are a little bit more sensitive. So that's the way I structure it. You could do it the reverse. So here I'm looking at this one. This one's popping $27 uh, dollars right now. So it's up 56%. Usually by now I want to go ahead and take the profits. Because uh, if you wait too long, because this is about probability of just touching, touching, taking things off. A hey, hi, how you doing, uh, Marcia? Alan, good morning. Hey, yeah, it's really live. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually do them, uh, but it'll be short. It's not going to be a super long session like I normally do. So here with 50%, again, these are small trades, right? When you see things on TV, they're going basically for a trade only. This is what a trade only. It's like one contract, 100 shares, you know, it's small size. Um, so you're going in, boom, you get in, uh, if you got a $245, um, risk, you might go out and you take off, um, half of that or a third of that or your profit it, it works boom take it off you don't wait for these things to expire even though i put them on for january you don't wait for these things to expire so i'll right click start closing out this trade and i'll just set it and i could even set it how do i do it i set it a little bit higher price to see if it'll get filled throughout the day it may not get filled today right now in the five minutes, 10 minutes that I'm going to be on here. But now this trade is in the uh, working order area. So you can see right there, it's working. I want 320. They're trading at 315. If at the end of the day, it doesn't close out within the hour or two, I'll start pushing that order to make sure it gets filled. I have to get it out kind of thing. Because I don't know if this market is scared, sketchy. It's going to start rolling over. You don't know. You could be buying the dips. Obviously, there's a lot of cash on the reserves right now because a lot of my theta trades are empty. I don't have anything like iron condors and that kind of thing. The reason for that is because uh, the market market's shaky at best, right? Uh, it's volatile. So when the VIX is over the higher level and higher levels different for different conditions, you're basically want to stay away, right? If, if, it's, if it's raining and there's a tornado outside, I'm staying away. So in this case, it's the same thing. I don't have theta trades because it's going to whip me. If anything, what I'm doing is more like a long portfolio, uh, maybe some swing trading and that kind of thing. So um, that's what I'm working. So this NC, what do I got? Disney. Nah, I put the wrong. What did I do? Did I do the wrong one? I put the wrong one in. Disney. That's 29%. NCLH is what I need right here. So NC. So you can see right there doing this live. It doesn't always pan out perfectly for me. NCLH. Let's go to NCLH. Here we go. There it is. That's what I was looking for. So this one. $120. Let me focus here. $130. I'm already up 75. That's 55% or so. 59. So yeah, so I got to get that trade out. I did the wrong one. I was talking and not focused. So again, I'll bump that trade to 210, a little bit higher. Let that trade work. So there we go. So that should now have it. There we go. I got that order on the side. I know it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and just combine these. So I move it down to the group. And it's going to be under unallocated and then I'll move it right back to spec because you can't combine it. So that one's in process. Now I'm going to review the weekly trade real quick. Let me think. McDonald's. Boom. All right. So you can see this is a back ratio spread. This is a protected vertical. In other words, puts kind of selling puts, but it's protected and this one's working out well. And I talked about this on, was it a video or two ago? Hey, Dunny. Hello. 
Um, so you can see this, the protected ones, kind of what I talked about earlier on the Apple trade, I believe, um, earlier. So, or the SPY trade. Uh, so this is working out and panning out. Now, in this case, I've only got a few days till expiration. Um, this is December 23rd. So I've got, oh, what is it? Two, three days kind of to go. So McDonald's, two days to go. So I am actually not going to do anything in this. Normally, 99% of the time, I wouldn't. Even 90% of the time, I would take it off. Why would I not take it off this time? It's because I'm under allocated. There's less capital that I have. There's This is not that many trades for me. Uh, so because it's not that many trades, I'm going to try to milk it, kind of like milking a cow. I'm going to try and get, you know, I got $258 out of 267 with two, three days. It's a super safe position. I'm willing to take that risk because I don't want to put a new trade with new risk on. This one's a safer bet. So let me just try and make that extra 20 bucks rather than putting new capital in. It's going to be going in and just taking this off the table. Uh, so normally I take it off. In this case, I'm letting it sit to be able to wrap uh, reap in those uh, remaining profits because I don't want the additional risk. So this one, I would say it's kind of like a safer trade. So it's good to go. Disney here, I am also under allocated. Disney is starting to move today. Um, it's starting to move a little bit higher. So I've got one contract. So I'm going to start looking at uh, Bank of America pass. What do we got going on here? Starting to move. It's working off of the 43. Okay, so we'll see. We'll give it time. So I'll check that out in a second. Let's go back to Disney. All right, so Disney's starting to move. You can see what I've got. If I put on like a contract somewhere over here, probably because it was starting to move. So I probably put one here and I was stuck with it for a little bit. So it's starting to move now again. I'm going to put on another contract um, just to start building out a position in Disney. So I've got this one going right here, January 21. So that's fine. It's nothing big. I'm going to go to probably... Mm, when is earnings? I have to check earnings. 210. So that's very important. 210. So I got to make sure it's a 38 day or so. I'll probably put on another one for allocation somewhere right at the money or so. Um, and let's take a look at what that's going to look like on individual. I'm going to get a little bit of theta problem. Not too bad, but it's pretty much neutralized. Let's try the one. Are they trading the 148s? Yeah, you're welcome, Dunny. Yeah, figured I got to do this anyway. I got to throw on some stuff. Usually I do it pretty quick. So, um, so they don't have the 148. So I'll have to go one. Let's see, 150s. That's too much. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to go to the 155s and 150. So I'm going to put that order in. I'm going to try to, again, go under the price a little bit and see if it'll get filled. Let that order come to me and just let it work right there. Paper platforms, I will say, as I usually always tell you guys, uh, they don't get filled as well, uh, meaning the price you can get filled like really favorably, I find, in the real platform, like you really gotta work that order a bit, like oh, I'm playing with it a bit more. In these, I find it'll fill like a lot faster, just so you, just so you know, compared to trading a real account. Um, okay, so I've got one going on Disney, so we'll go ahead and move that trade to unallocated and then move it back to swing. I wish they could have a combination thing. P-ton, um, down on that one. Ton, not too bad. So you can see where the back ratio is real nice in this case, where it's a 9-8 spread and this one just keeps going down. So, you know, you're taking a shot and you're like, okay, well, maybe it'll pop. Um, you have to like say, hey, am I willing to kind of deal with that? If I didn't have it, just so you, you could see um, the way that it would look is I'd be down like a, a ton more. But because of the, because of the, that extra put I bought, it kind of slows that um, that curvature. Now, my issue here is starting to come in with a theta problem. The Vega looks OK. The Delta is fine. I'm OK carrying 53 shares of the stock uh, support around 36. So that's fine. If it gets in here, that'll be a problem with the theta. So it's still grinding. January 7th, I've got some time. How would I manage this position right now? I need to, I got to get some premium in there. So let's go in and um, let's throw in a iron condor on top. So I'll go with the 37, 35, ah, 37. There it is, move this down. 37, 35, and then we'll throw another one over here. There's my iron condor to kill that theta. You can see that theta is cut by about half. 
Okay, so let's get rid of these real quick. Let's see, there's the iron condor. And uh, I want to position it a little bullish. I'm already bullish. Uh, if you want it a little more neutral, I don't think one point will matter too much on this with a shaky market. Uh, they're not trading the 36. What about the 35s? There we go. Let's see what that's going to look like. Okay, so that'll get me three theta negative. If I do two, it'll give me almost no theta with a little bit of upside, but still keeping my delta there. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do on this one. And if you look at the expirations, you'll see the two there. That's kind of an interesting way to look at it. So I got break evens kind of on the iron condor here. And then if it does keep going up, I'm good and safer on that one on a longer duration. So that's the way I would do it. So we'll just do two for now. We will put it in, what is that under a swing, swing trade? So there we go, Peloton's under there. So we got that working. So again, the order's working. Um, I didn't push that order too much because I want to make sure it gets filled a little quicker. So normally I'd work the order a little more on that one. Uh, USO continues to do okay. Let's check it out. All right. Um, Okay, so this one's running well and it's fine. Again, with, with the shaky market, you don't go in too, too hard or too heavy with these positions. I don't think I'm gonna add or anything to this one. It's just gonna let it sit. It's a little toppy again. It's like we went down, we popped up. Now we're going sideways. Again, you don't have to add everything every day. So just let it sit. If I had two contracts, I'd take one off. So simple, simple little stuff. Visa, let's see, this one's moving well as well picking up some speed back ratio. You can see I did a lot of back ratios with a shaky market. Uh, this one also the same like with the other one that I did with McDonald's. It's only actually this one's got more time. January 7th. How many days do we have here? Okay. Um, 17 days. And where's the chart look like? How's the action? It's already a little toppy. Hey, don't forget we got a discord server guys. Um, it's just more for announcements for now, but we're going to be going into uh, some other cool stuff on there later on, maybe after the new year. It'll take me a month <laughs> to get it going. So I just got too many things cooking with, every, you know, family, Christmas, all that stuff. Hopefully you guys are doing all right with the holidays. All right. So, um, so Visa right now, I'd probably take it off. Um, so, and I got 10 to 12 contracts, so I am going to cut it. So we'll sell. I will trim it. I'm not going to take everything off. I mean, I, I got most of the, the, the profit on it. I mean, it's 480, 520. Yeah, why not? Let's just cut the whole thing. Only because um, you could put a new trade on later on. And I'll just do this one. This one is swing. We'll cut it. And if I want to go back in it, it's been working well. I'm going to reduce my size and see if it gets filled. This is going to be kind of... Um, 195, 13 delta, two. let's go to 200. We'll just do like a smaller size now because we got 10 contracts there. I'm just going to go smaller size because it's already ran up. Probably like two, let's start with two. It's not a down day. I don't want to be too heavy on a down day uh, or on an up day. And especially with like a first day going up, it's like, psh, you don't want to do that. Um, so we'll send that in. We'll put it back into the swing. So I got two trades working there. Close one, open one. There we go. One got filled on the Visa. What is that one? The vertical. Okay. The back ratio will probably be more difficult to uh, hit. Okay. Um, because it's more complex of a trade. Let's review this Apple trade real quick. I always have the long portfolio and you could start building it. It's more complex as you can see. A lot of stuff going on here. Okay. So I got this one vertical not doing anything a back ratio this one's panning out we did this one this is the one i think we did on the video uh, the other day i put it on so you could see it's it's working out okay there's nothing there to do uh this one's 50 50. this is a 50 50. i don't know if i need to add anything because the stock is it's bouncing i mean you could always just add a little bit i got i don't i'm not that heavy on the positions so uh, earnings are 126. So if we got earnings on 126, I got to make sure I get out by then. Um, can't do the 28s. I could, but I have to get out probably the January 20, 31 days out. Let's do the 31 days out. I'm just going to do another vertical right at the, am I missing any theta? Let's see. 
yeah I'm missing some theta so if I'm missing some theta I'll probably do a put vertical spread a little bit but let's spread it to the 24 days I don't have anything in the 24 why do I want to spread it to the 24 it's because I already got stuff in the 31 I got stuff in the 59 days out 38 I don't have anything so I'm trying to diversify risk so I need to spread it across different durations so if I go in here 24 sounds pretty good so what I'll do is cut that theta a little bit I don't have to get it to zero I'm just saying like watch out for your theta so here we got the theta if I do that vertical three I'm going from a three theta negative to a negative one and that's fine because I just don't want it to creep up against me so that'll be on the individual spread what's that gonna look like like this I could even do an iron condor because because the market's shaky at best <laughs> where are we with the SPY now oh we're grinding up again okay so it's first day one day doesn't make a trend so but let's see let's start because I don't want it to snap up on me either so I, if I'm bullish I'm bullish this is the bullish segment of the portfolio so we will go into the bullish segment and spreading out durations I know I'm not going to get overlapping trades so there you go that one got filled so we got Apple QQQ I don't think I'm doing anything I think that's shareholds so I've got some shareholds right there it's just holding 100 shares simple and then I've got um, verticals these I should probably just take off December 31st there there's nothing there and it's too long of a hold there's it's not worth a three day, like a 10 day hold because a 10 day holds almost too long if it snaps down you, I mean you just reset it up so I'll start pairing this position out let's see what they're trading at let's go with one contract and then we'll do the next one at um actually they're already at a penny so it doesn't matter let's let's get all eight out then close those eight let's double check my numbers okay eight one penny I don't think they'll take it but let's see what happens let's get rid of the sixes take this one Oh, they took it. No, that's Iron Condor on Peloton. Finally got filled. You see, if you're patient with the um, with the spreads, like you know, eventually it comes to you. You don't have to like push it. Um, let's see these fives. This is still working, so that's okay. Vertical and these sixes. These are January twenty first. These are working out too well, so I'm gonna buy back three of these, and I'm gonna try to do five pennies five cents a nickel instead of instead of the regular six cents so we'll get that going um, this one actually I'll cancel and replace and make it a good till cancel for tomorrow as well just in case and then we'll let that work so that's kind of mostly what I have there is what is this PepsiCo that I put something on PepsiCo I guess I did I just didn't sort it okay PepsiCo um, this is a simple like 50 50 swing trade so what's that looking it's down a bit so probably swing up so this will go in the swing up I'm not doing anything it's not doing anything right now move to group swing directional so there's my group I don't have any theta trades I might start putting on one or two of those um, and then we got spy we've got a bunch of positions on here and you can see some of them are starting to come back like you know I talked about a webinar doing one spy a day kind of vertical and you can see like some of them are starting to pan out and some of them are struggling a bit so here like this one's up $24 uh, that's a put vertical here is again a 50 50 at the money vertical it's not doing much there let's see this one this one is up $4 or in total 12 for the day but up only four uh, this one and I know which one it is because of the the distance spread they're all going to be the same pretty much let's look at these other ones here I got the longer dated ones like see this one's up 15 bucks so we'll just let that sit 
and there's plenty to add to this. So let's see, since we don't have to worry about earnings, just add another one for in case we keep going up. I'm kind of playing around this area. Where do we have less allocation? Let's go to 20 strikes. Got a lot at the 100. I don't have a lot at the 87 days. I don't have anything in the 59, 38 days. There's some puts there. The 100 is where I'm doing a lot of stuff, so I'd probably try and avoid that. I don't have any on the 150. And if we get a major market pull, oh, there's the QQQs. If we get a major market pullback, the 150s will be better. If we get a pop for the short term, the shorter 59, 87, or 87 days will be better. So, um, and then how much capital am I using on this? 2,000, so it's not that crazy. So let's just, um, let's just go slow, why not? We'll um, start it out slow. We will go in and do a, Let's buy this one, sell that one. Ah, what is that? That doesn't look right. Buy this one, sell that one. There we go. Okay, so individually, we're not overlapping anything. Just put it right there, and I'll try to see if I can get 190, see if the, it'll pull back throughout the day. Uh, long portfolio, and we'll let that sit. So... That's basically it for portfolio management for today on this one. Um, you know, some things are popping, doing okay. And uh, what else do I have? I had something on UPST. Yeah, that one's moving well. Okay. Um, where's my other Moderna, Facebook, Tesla, Apple? Um, okay. So if you look at just kind of where the volume is right now today, you got that Micron stuff going on. So that's popping. A lot of it's earnings. I'm not going to do anything there. Nike's also kind of playing around uh, UAL and uh, Groupon. So those are kind of the big ones. Adobe's Toast. There's nothing I want to do there. So you're trying to stay away from earnings. So you got Boeing. So right now, if I do anything, it's speculative plays. I wouldn't put on too many um, like non-directional trades. Just for the time being, it's just a little bit too rocky. And um, where's Amazon here? So that's my only thought. The only thing I might do is, if anything, I would do an iron condor. Um, iron condor, maybe because the volatility is high, a little longer duration, as, as weird as this, but slightly bullish. Um, so it's a weird combination, but it's only because the market can snap up. But I want, I don't want to be just put verticals either. So it's rather than doing a back ratio spread, I would probably do like an iron condor. Um, kind of protecting it that way. So the question is, is which one do we do it on? Usually it's the ones I do mo most commonly on. So I um, can even do it on NVIDIA right here. So we'll start that process and start it kind of slow and um, something simple, NVIDIA. Okay, so maybe 31 days. Let's see what we've got, 45 strikes. Maybe we'll need to go 75 strikes. And let's start here. Okay, so I'll bring a tighter on the... Uh, there we go. There's the spy. You can see they're getting filled. Boom, 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 boom. That's what happens when you're patient. If you push the order, you're not, you're not going to get good fills. Um, okay, so here we'll go on this 245-240. And then we'll go with... Scroll, scroll, scroll. 310, 315. Let's see where that gives us. Okay, so we got a start. That's a baseline. Okay, so we got a base and we've got basically negative delta, which I don't want. If we snap up, that's gonna be a problem. Um, so, and I can't, I can either widen the strikes. Where, what are the strikes at? There's, I don't like trading these halves, 267 and a halves. So I don't care for them. Um, but I could probably do like that. That's what I might do. You know, I don't like doing the halves because they don't, not as liquid usually. And then I might bring this one in five points. 
and this one in five points. So now I've got slightly bullish. So if this thing snaps up 20 points, which it can pretty easily in a single day, it snap up 30, I don't, you know, it's got a big range. I mean, if I look at the right here, 31 days, I could snap up 37. If I look at the next two days, they're even budgeting even maybe a possible 10 point swing and a 10 day they're budgeting for about a 21 point swing. So yeah, so 10, 15 points is, yeah, I gotta be able to handle that move and this will be down 40. So we'll put one contract on for now and see where it goes because I got 30 days. So if it starts grinding up, I'll start selling more puts or buying verticals um, to the upside because I get, you know, just, just to start some theta going. So we could do that, pop that into a theta trade and we'll let that sit and try and get filled. Again, I'm not going to sit around and wait for these to get filled. I'm just going to do its thing and I got other stuff to take care of, but it'll be going into the state of trade right here. So then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to look at our portfolios individually and just kind of allocate them. Um, so if you look at it from a portfolio basis, you'll be able to kind of see uh, kind of everything. And then, um, and that way you see, hey, how's this portfolio doing? So this is the, for example, the long portfolio, you got maybe some swing directionals more bullish right now obviously because the market sold off uh theta with we're not filled yet on that one um weekly trades i got you know just a couple of stuff going on right here mcdonald's i guess remaining and then some speculative which is this one um norwegian cruise lines which i'm kind of waiting to get filled on so anyways that's it the orders are working there's nothing there if you have a quick question or two i'm happy to stick around for another minute or two and then after that, um, I think it's lunchtime for me. So I'm on the Eastern coast. So hopefully you guys are doing all right. We are 1147 here and everything's starting to move now, 51 points up. So we'll see what they do after lunchtime, but Nvidia's moving. Let me check my other ones. Uh, Facebook's moving. So Moderna's back. What else do I have? PayPal in my live account. Yeah, that one's moving. How do you manage the days till expiration? They are mostly so short. Um, uh, they're not really that short. Um, I wouldn't say they're that short. If if you think the days to expiration are too short for you, uh, then just go longer duration. The luxury of time is, is always there. You can see like on the SPY, I have the days till expiration is 150. So what is short for you? Um, uh, uh, Gelesium. What, what, you know, short for you or long for you is, is going to be different. For me, 150 is pretty good. I think if you go beyond 150, 180 is fine actually as well. But once you get into, um, like, let's say if you're trying to like buy a single call, right? Um, if you're trying to buy a single call and you're trying to do like a 206, 395 or 451, the leaps, right? A lot of people talk about leaps and, uh, in the marketplace, uh, a lot of the managers, the, um, the, the floor guys, they don't, they don't like leaps because there's a lot of volatility involved in those. Uh, the longer the duration, the more volatility. And with more volatility, they have to offset that volatility hedge through stock. And it's really a pain to manage. Uh, it's just too difficult. Uh, so they hate trading them. You get usually bad fill rates on those and you just don't want to hold those things as a bag. So I usually will rather just do something around anywhere between 30 to 150. Again, I, I could do a 10 day, 17 day, but if I do a 31, to uh, 150 that gives me a wide spread and once i get let's say 150 i use the baseline you know most people use zero as as kind of their main hey it expires for me i use the 150s as about a 45 day so that 150 when it gets to 45 that to me is zero uh, because the way that the 45 days or or less will start behaving is totally different uh, they behave just differently. So if you put on a 30 day trade, you could take it to zero. If you put on a 150 day trade uh, till expiration, you might want to, you know, kill it at around 60 or 45. The behavior is differently. So you got to definitely manage it a little bit differently. Yeah, Dave, lunchtime for you. Hopefully you're going to eat some yummy food. What you got going on for the lunchtime? <laughs> Last question. Uh, do you alter your portfolio when you think there's a big market trend change? For example, breaking the bullish trend? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, sometimes you just, you, you take a hit. Obviously, I took a hit with my live account portfolio this last week because you have, uh, you have this, uh, long portfolio, right? So you still have things that 
you know, market typically goes up, you still make money from bullish movements. So you'll take a hit. But what might happen is you might offset it with some hedges on the swing side. And I might start throwing in bearish things on later on when the market pops. I don't, I'm not doing it right now because, you know, the market's kind of oversold a bit. But I would start doing it here very soon. But right now, like, like if you look at some of these things, like they're starting to pop a little bit. And again, it's just one day, like Bank of America right now. For me, I probably put on a couple contracts in my live account, just start going in that way. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Like when the market is changing, yeah, I would, I would definitely like be less allocated. And right now, it's the same thing. I would, I'd be less, you know, I don't have a lot of theta trades going right now because the volatilities are, a little whippy market shaky um you know the one day it's up you know three four days it's been going down so yeah one day uh it's nice but it's it's not proven to me uh one day is in a trend so it's like okay put on a couple things but not like 10 things if you normally put on 10 things you put on one or two things so i think it, what i do in this account how many trades did i do since this is the paper account right so uh, let's go to what's the date because I don't I don't trade on this one that actively it just depends when I do coaching things uh, but here where's the orders 300 and this one's 86 let's see does it tell me I don't think it this one doesn't tell me as much because normally you see like 3,000, 4,000 trades in here so I have a ton of trades that usually I do but anyway uh Maybe it's not pulling it up or something. But anyway, yeah, so you just, um, you you manage the duration based on what makes sense for you. If it doesn't make sense for you, go longer. If you want to go shorter, go shorter. Just understand when you go shorter, you're, you're going to increase price risk big time. For me, the only reason I'll go some shorter on some of these other ones, like 31, is because I've already been in them now. Uh, these are two days to go because I've already been in them for a while when I was doing coaching students like last month with people that I was working back ratios with. So we threw a couple trades on and stuff like that. So uh, these are just kind of leftovers. So there's some other ones that are shorter term, but that's only because they got there. Um, and sometimes it does make sense to do shorter term if you need it. Um, but otherwise it's, you know, you, you got you to gotta make sure you understand what's, what you're doing uh, with the shorter term. Because a lot of people do them, but they get whipped on it big time. Oh, there's the iron condor on NVIDIA. So you see, when you wait, it gets filled. So anyway, uh, last question. Hi, Remedu. How you doing? Uh, so yeah, so NVIDIA. So now we got filled on NVIDIA and we will go into... Show all single symbol in video. There it is. It's filled. And even then you can see it's down five bucks. It's a bad, not a perfect fill, but it's an okay. And saying how many and how fast you can manage all these. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a while with Thinkorswim, but that's why when I do the training videos on YouTube, I really try to slow it down. The course is the same thing. And that's why I've been reluctant to really do this or show this to, to people uh, on, on YouTube because a lot of the people on YouTube are starting out uh, kind of, um at the beginning right you're doing basics so once they see this and this is this is light this is to me probably like only 20 percent of what i would be doing um once you really get into it you'll see some crazy stuff going on here but you know not everybody does this or show this what they'll do is a lot of times people see people pumping stocks and it's like oh buy this buy that but it's all just basic buying shares and and that kind of thing but this is kind of more of a uh, a different way of looking at it and i haven't seen this before and i've I've shown it in the coaching and in the mentoring. We, we work with this a lot, but, um, but for YouTube, I just, I'm always hesitant because then people get confused. It's like, oh my God. Uh, even when I have just a basic how to buy a call option or a put option, people will criticize saying, well, you didn't show which, which button to click here or here. I'm like, uh, yeah, I know. Okay. Well, <laughs> watch the other 45 videos. I guess I, you know, there's only so much you can do in a certain amount of time, right? It's a lot of work, a lot of, um, practice, study time. And then, 89% of it is also psychological staying with some trades or like man so you give up like 10 15 grand in a single day very quickly too um easily uh with with some sometimes the market just rolls against you so anyway um I don't want to freak people out so all right thanks for joining me today and uh enjoy the rest of the week ahead I'm gonna have, grab some lunch and then um We'll probably do some more stuff like this later this week. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And it uh, just depends on my uh, schedule and if people are doing some coaching things that take up some more time. So enjoy the week and I will see you next time.